Hello! We got our design back from the professional engineer today and we have some changes to make on our design. I'm still in my winter jacket because we literally just got back from the gym after work. It's 7:10 p.m. Georgie needs to go to the bathroom and we need to work on our house design because we have to get materials purchased as soon as possible. And Georgie is going crazy because the cats like to sit out here on the porch and wait for food. Is there a kitty in that box? You know her. You know that girl. You ready to go potty? Oh man, oh man, zoomies. Oh, okay, let's go potty. Let's go potty. Show me where your stuff is. Nothing like a well-rounded meal of sausage, asparagus, and some box mac and cheese. This <laughs> box mac and cheese especially is a staple for us when we are super busy like we are this week. So, that's what it's gonna be. Yummy meal. Oh, not for you though. Not for you. It's for this guy. Thank you. What are you doing? I am looking at our plants. Make some minor changes to the roof framing. Yesterday, I sent my plans to our local engineering firm and they actually, and basically with the uh, prompt to look over it, check for any um, structural deficiencies, anything like that, give me advice on cost savings, that sort of thing. And they actually turned it around in one day, which was incredible. Um, but the main thing that came out of it was um, our roof style. It's called the salt box style. Basically when the roof on the front, on one side is a steeper pitch than the other, and it makes kind of an, an asymmetrical A shape. Um, the loads on that roof are a little bit different than your typical roof, which is a, a symmetrical A shape. So because of that, um, we needed to, we're going to need to do a little bit more work to the design. There's a couple different options to deal with the salt box style. Um, you can either do something called a structural ridge where the top of the roof, the top, the, the top point of that A is basically a beam that's supported by posts and your roof just kind of leans against that. With the A-shaped roof, we're just licking my leg at the same time. Because you're sweating. With the A-shaped <laughs> with the a roof, when you have a rafter frame roof, the, with, uh, with load, the roof wants to go like this and push the walls out. Oh, I'm being the A. a. <laughs> and and your, your ceiling basically prevents that. At this member's intention. So in a symmetrical roof, this is no problem at all. When you do this and you, one roof is like that, that tension member, or this member right here is in more tension than it, than it usually is. And so basically under high loads, like if we got a ton of snow or something sitting on the roof, the roof might want to push this back wall out a little bit and go like that. Or in worst case scenario, just collapse entirely. That's not what you want. So we have to, we're, there's basically a few ways we can, we can work around it. Like the structural ridge is what I was, what I was talking about. Um, or we can increase the height of our front wall uh, potentially enough to do a trust roof. Yeah, so right now the back wall is higher than the front wall and then we have some dormers on the front. So if we go the route with a higher wall on the front, we would have to get rid of those dormers and figure out that window situation. So it would require a decent amount of redesign. Well, we could we could still keep inside. the dormers, but they would be scooted further forward towards the the front edge of the building. In fact, the, the front wall of the dormer would be shared with the with the front wall of the uh, the floor below it, and then <clears throat> we would again work with the truss manufacturer, and they can do um, dormers within the trusses if there's just some extra framing. As gotcha. The there. Yeah. One thing we want to keep in mind with our design is that it will eventually attach to a larger house. We really don't want this garage apartment to overtake the overall house. So we want to keep it in uh, looking in a way that it still looks kind of like a garage and that it's not like overshadowing <laughs> a future home. So um, that's going to be a little bit of a challenge, but we think we can do it with either dormers or gable roof styles. You want a plate? Alright. Alright. Good. Have you been a good boy? It's a good boy. What do we have here? Ice cream. Ice cream? 
can't have dinner without dessert. <laughs> but it's winter. Who do you think I am? And we also have <laughs> some pie in the fridge still. Yes. <laughs> Beggar. What are you doing? We love you anyways. Okay, George. It's brainstorm. How do we redesign the whole top half of the house? In one night. <laughs> Ready? Go. Week night. Open. <laughs> <laughs> we need some jams. Okay, first phase, open the plan. Okay, <laughs> we're there. Next. <laughs> what is this thing doing? <laughs> oh my gosh, he's Good too dude. silly. So, the least disturbance to our plan will actually be the structural ridge. And basically it's going to be putting a LVL beam here that runs along the side of this window comes down, we'll probably shift that door over a little bit, all the way down in the foundation. I'm doing the same thing on the other side, like here. The hard part though is the center because we would need to put a beam, or sorry, we need to put a column roughly somewhere in here. Which is the middle of Basically where- Basically the middle of the house. <laughs> where you would actually, walk from the kitchen actually, to the so, dining room. Well, you know what, actually the column would go right it would actually be in line with this wall more or less. So we could we could potentially work something out where it's coming down here next to the uh, pantry. Like here, either next to the well, let's see what our let's see what our uh, our distance is. So this actually might not be, the structural ridge actually might not be bad because this is 19 foot. So this this is almost the midway point. And almost the exact center point here, we have the corner of our pantry. So we could potentially put a column here. The hard part is below that. Yeah, I'm gonna turn the, the, wall, the, the wall below that on. And this is the wall in our garage. I'll, I'll go down a floor. So if I keep my finger in the same spot, Yikes. we would have a post like right here, which is kind of awkward. Uh, I guess it's not the worst thing in the world. I mean, it's basically, yeah, it's like basically where my cursor is. If I turn this, yeah, there we go. It's basically where my cursor would be. So, not ideal, but doing that structural ridge is the least impact to our current layout and our current plans right now. It's gonna be a little bit more money for the ridge beams um, and then a little bit more in engineering to make the connection draw outs and all that, but we could keep our roof exactly how it is if we do that structural ridge my turn for dessert and i'm picking pumpkin pie george is still waiting for that food what my computer screen looks like versus alex's who does the real work <laughs> so what alex is doing right now is he basically made a copy of our existing design so that he didn't mess up what he, all that work that he had previously done. This is just so we can kind of move walls around and play around with the design and see what we like and what we don't like. That is one of the benefits of this software is that you can play and see how things look. All right, I think I found a roof line that I really like. Check this out. It's a little bit contemporary but I think with the right styling, this would be a good idea. What? What do you think? Alex, that looks like a castle. <laughs> this is what happens when you just let the software do its thing. Oh gosh, oh gosh, oh gosh. <laughs> you must control the software. I played around with some ideas on getting this closer to a traditionally trust roof, and I'm not sure how much I really like it. I think my best bet coming back to my original plan here is actually just to do the structural ridge. I don't think it's really gonna add that much cost. A little bit more material cost with LVLs for the ridge board instead of a two by 12, um, and then also the posts, but I don't think it'll be that bad. So I just put some points in. These are right at the ridge line, essentially, where the dotted line is. And it just so happens, it actually works out kind of well that these are pretty close. I might have to just shift this door over and this wall so this lines up. And then I can hide the end columns in their respective uh, side gable walls. And then this center column is really right at like the corner where the pantry wall is here. And I've got this overlaid on, this is without the, uh, 
without the garage in view. So this is what it would look like upstairs and then and then this is what it would look like downstairs with that overlaid. So there would be a post right here towards the back of the garage. Um, for normal sized cars, it's pretty much at the edge of where you'd actually even need to be pulling in. But I think I would also shift this door over just a hair, make this three foot instead of four, and that would help keep cars away from the post too. So I'm gonna talk this over with the engineer tomorrow morning, see what his thoughts are, if he has any other ideas and then we will go from there. All right, so what's the update? Well, I had a couple days of back and forth with the engineer and we did end up settling on doing the ridge beam. So there is gonna be a calm, but I think we'll get over it. It's not that big of a deal. Uh, and it's important <laughs> to keep our roof overhead. So. I think you were the only one who cared about it, but yes, yeah, it's okay. I'm the only one who cared about it. Um, so that decision is made. We're gonna have a structural ridge in the house. It's gonna be a little bit extra framing labor, but it will be kind of nice. We'll have more flexibility with the ceiling and we can kind of do whatever we want there. Thank you so much for watching. We have a lot of things happening over the next couple of weeks. So make sure to subscribe to our channel if you aren't already. And also like this video if you enjoyed it. Thanks.